Hey everyone, my name is Gandolin, and welcome to another World of Warcraft guide. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about patch 8.1.5. Before we get started, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who checked up on me during my absence. Real life got in the way of making videos for a while, but I'm finally back and hoping to have regular updates again. I really appreciate all the support even when I was away. Alright, let's get started. Patch 8.1.5 released on March 12th in North America and March 13th in the EU. It's a relatively small content patch, though it does bring some really cool things to the game. First up, one of the most highly anticipated additions are two new allied races. Kul Tiran humans will join the Alliance, and Zandalari trolls will join the Horde. The unlock requirements are very similar for both. Kul Tiran humans can be druids, hunters, mages, monks, priests, rogues, shamans, and warriors. To unlock them, you need to complete the following. First, earn Exalted with the Proudmoor Admiralty. Major sources of rep are Tira Guard Sound storylines and world quests, along with the faction's Emissary quest. You can also use contracts created from Inscription to get additional rep when completing world quests. Second, complete the Tides of Vengeance achievement. This requires you to complete both the 8.0 and 8.1 Alliance War Campaign quest lines. And third, complete the achievement A Nation United, which asks you to complete all the zone storylines in Kul Tiras, along with the Pride of Kul Tiras questline you get at max level. Xandalari trolls can be druids, hunters, mages, monks, paladins, priests, rogues, shamans, and warriors. To unlock them, you need to complete the following. First, earn Exalted with the Zandalari Empire. Major sources of rep are Zuldazar storylines and world quests along with the faction's emissary quest. You can also use contracts created from Inscription to get additional rep when completing world quests. Second, complete the Tides of Vengeance achievement. This requires you to complete both the 8.0 and 8.1 Horde war campaign questlines. And third, complete the achievement Zandalar Forever, which asks you to complete all the zone storylines in Zandalar, along with the final seal questline you get at max level. Once you've completed the requirements, head to the Stormwind or Orgrimmar Embassy to start the questline to recruit them into your faction. Both new allied races have heritage armor you earn by leveling them from 20 to 110, as well as a new mount that can be used by all characters of the appropriate faction. Next up, we've got some new story content. I'm just going to do a quick spoiler-free rundown of the stuff that's coming. First, both factions have new chapters in their war campaigns that deal with the aftermath of the Battle of Dazar Alor. Additionally, there's a new achievement called Two Sides to Every Tale, this is awarded to players that have finished the Kul Tiras and Zandalar storylines and war campaigns up to 8.1 for both factions. It awards two new mounts, the Blood Flank Charger for Horde and the Ironclad Frostclaw for Alliance. Next, there's a questline you can pick up from Gazlo in Zandalar Harbor or Kelsey Steelspark in Baralis that deals with two characters from the BFA prequel novel Before the Storm. Completing it awards Feathers the Mechanical Parrot. There's also a new questline in Silithus with Magni and his continuing efforts to heal Azeroth. And then we have some exciting news for Hunters. There is a new questline about Hati, the pet bound to the Beast Mastery artifact from Legion. You'll unlock the ability to tame Hati, along with some items that let you play with him, and even one that lets you use him as a mount for a short time. You need to be level 120 to start this questline, which you can pick up from an image of Mimiron in Tradewinds Market Baralis or Grand Bazaar Zuldazar. Lastly, there is a new questline involving Zalatath, the entity contained in the Shadow Priest artifact. This questline sets up the story for the new raid. 
So now let's talk about the Crucible of Storms. This is a new two-boss raid taking place below the Shrine of the Storm in Stormsong Valley. We'll be investigating the whispers that drove Lord Stormsong mad. We know that we'll be heading to Najatar in 8.2, and this raid seems to give us a taste of what's to come. It will open five weeks after the patch drops. Normal and Heroic will be available on April 16th, with Mythic and Raid Finder opening on April 23rd. The first boss will drop loot 5 eye levels higher than Dazar Alor, and the second boss will drop loot 10 eye levels higher. Next up, we have Profession Questlines to acquire the new Tools of the Trade items. Each crafting profession has its own item that offers special bonuses. The quest lines can be picked up from BFA profession trainers in the capital cities once you've reached level 120 and have 150 skill points in BFA crafting. Next up, let's talk about class changes. Since this is a smaller patch, there are very few changes to talk about. Some tweaks here and there to different aspects of different classes. Best thing to do is just check out the link in the description to Wowhead's list of all the class changes that are coming. Next are the new portal rooms in Stormwind and Orgrimmar. These are meant to consolidate and streamline portal travel from your faction's capital city. Stormwind's room is located inside the Mage Tower in the same place the old room used to be, and Orgrimmar's room is located inside the city's main gate. Part of this change also means that several portals in older areas of the game have been removed, like the ones in Legion Dalaran. The Cataclysm portals in each city remain unchanged, and there is an NPC in the new portal rooms that can still send you to the Blasted Lands. Despite some of the drama this has caused, I do have to say the rooms are beautiful and so are the new portals. Next up, for those of you that like challenging single-player content, the Brawler's Guild is returning. This time there is a questline involved as you progress through the ranks. You'll be investigating a murder mystery and can earn a Brawler's Guild transmog set, tabards, and shirts, as well as everyone's favorite crocolisk, Bruce, as a mount. Now let's talk about the changes for PvP. First up, Arathi Basin and Warsong Gulch have been remastered. Nothing has changed about their setup or gameplay, but now they look much more modern. Second, there is a new PvP brawl for Arathi Basin called Comp Stomp. Players will face off against a team of AI opponents. This new brawl will be available on March 19th. And lastly, Wintergrasp is returning as a new epic battleground. For the first week of the patch, it will be available as a brawl, and after that it will be in the epic battleground section of the group finder. Next up, let's talk about world events. First, we have the addition of Warlords of Draenor Time Walking, which will first pop up in May 2019. It will include the following dungeons. Akindun, Blood Mall Slagmines, Everbloom, Iron Docks, Shadow Moon Burial Grounds, and Skyreach. There are two new mounts that can be purchased for 5,000 badges each, along with some new toys, rep items, and time warped gear. Next, the Dark Moon Fair has received some updates. There is a new ride, the Dark Moon Roller Coaster. It functions just like the carousel, costing one ride ticket to enter and giving you the wee buff as you ride it. The fair also has three new balloon pets you can purchase for 90 tickets each. Next, Children's Week has been updated to include Kul Tiran and Zandalari children, with four new pets to collect. There are new holiday hearthstone toys for Noble Garden, Midsummer, and Brewfest. There are also new Noble Garden bunny ears. There will be a new season of Trial of Style on March 24th, with new transmog sets to earn for each armor type. And then there are three new micro-holidays, the Wanderers Festival, Luminous Luminaries, and Free T-Shirt Day. Lastly, there are a bunch of smaller things to tell you about. There are some new Tortolan Seeker world quests, 
along with a new kind of Naga attack world quest. Seafarer's doubloon vendors for island expeditions now carry bind-on-account gear tokens that can be sent to level 111 alts and give quest quality gear. There is a new Raiding with Leashes achievement for collecting pets from Pandaria raids. New heirloom upgrade tokens have been added that update heirloom gear to level 120. And lastly, the companion app has been updated with new calendar and social features. So that's everything you need to know about patch 8.1.5. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and of course, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.